This is my first computer cart for the shop somewhere around 2014. It was designed for a desktop computer and was used to connect to my Shapeoko 2 CNC machine. It's a basic shelf style cart that my brother continues to use to this day. This is the second computer cart for my shop, my current shop, and it was designed for a laptop with an integrated control pendant stand in the cart. The interior area was supposed to house drawers, but I never really got around to making them. This is my third computer cart for the shop, specifically for my CNC machine, and the one I will make in this video. It has five drawers, cable management holes in the back, it's set up for desktop or laptop use, it rolls really easily and is made entirely out of three sheets of plywood. Speaking of plywood, I'm using one of the worst batches of half inch pine CD rated plywood that I have ever used. As you can see, it's warped quite a bit, but I went ahead with the build because I thought most of the warp wouldn't be evident in the smaller pieces. And also, this is a shop project, which allows for greater flexibility to experiment. Because I don't have a vacuum table, I normally secure sheet goods with a nail gun that fires plastic nails. But in this case, I thought the bow resistance was just too much for the plastic nails, so I used washer head screws. All of these cuts will be made with a one quarter of an inch diameter two flute down cut spiral bit. I get great quality bits from bitsbits.com and if you use the promo code jbits15 you can get great quality bits as well and save 15% on your order. I learned a lot on the first sheet. The plywood has a bow in both directions so in, in some areas the center of the plywood was forced down to due to the bow and in other areas it was kind of forced up. So here you can see some of the pieces broke the tabs and popped up due to the stress of the plywood. And looking at the video footage, I was also able to see the dust boot forcing the plywood down in areas. This tells me that the bristles might be a little too stiff for my particular dust boot. I experimented with different ways to pull the pieces off the machine with the easiest and quickest method being to just pull the sheet to the floor. I'll knock the pieces free with a mallet once the next sheet is cutting. First, I'll give the bed a quick vacuum to pick up any loose debris or dust piles, which in, in this case, the plywood's bent so much that it doesn't really matter. And then the next sheet is loaded and secured the same way. Screws are a must here. As I've previously said, this stuff is just way too warped for plastic nails. Rinse and repeat for the last sheet. With all three sheets cut, I started removing the tabs at the router table, and I find that a large diameter flush trim bit works the best so I made sure not to place any tabs on interior corners or tight areas when making the tool paths. This is a production step where you just kind of get in the rhythm and, and try and stay organized. At the assembly table, I took a quick audit of all of the drawer bottoms to see how bad they were warped, uh, how bad the warp kind of remained in the smaller pieces. Most of them were acceptable, but I did have a couple that made me a little bit concerned at this point. Before I did any design work on this build, I cut a few test slots in scrap plywood to determine the appropriate joinery dimension. It turned out that a slot width of 0.47 inches was perfect for this half inch CD plywood, which means the standard mortise width and tenon length are all 0.47 inches for these pieces. Here you can see my first dry assembly of a drawer and everything is holding together just fine without any glue or clamps. With at least one dry fit confirmed, I went ahead with the assembly, starting with the drawers. Each joint gets a little glue and some brad nails to hold it all together. No clamps necessary. I did have one particular drawer bottom that had quite a bit of warp to it, and my solution was to use a circular saw and cut a shallow groove perpendicular to the bend direction, hoping that it would lessen the warp slightly. It didn't work as much as I wanted it to, but it was enough to make a difference. With the drawers done, the case can be assembled, and this was kind of tricky. There are four solid horizontal pieces, and each one of those has four tenons on each end. After adding glue, I had to flatten out any bow by hand to get all of the joints to line up and then drive the pieces home with a mallet. The somewhat challenging part came when I flipped the assembly over onto the other side panel. Everything was a bit more interesting on this side and a little bit more difficult to get the correct sequence of the joints closing. I ended up getting the joints started, moved it to the floor, and then used a sludge hammer to drive all of the joints closed. This was more of a hassle due to the plywood trying to bend, putting a little bit more friction on every one of the joints. Then some nails because, well, shooting nails out of a nail gun is a lot of fun. 
Without the back panel, the structure has a lot of flex to it, and the easiest way to reduce or eliminate any racking is to add a back panel, which is the next piece of the puzzle. The back panel fits snugly inside the side panels and is connected to the horizontal pieces with a total of 12 mortise and tenon joints. To add a lip to the bottom area and stiffen up the bottom panel, a small short wall is added with glue and clamps. The same technique of four mortise and tenon joints was used here. Next up is the drawer runners, and I got the drawer system inspiration from evilmadscientist.com. I like what they did, but I wanted to simplify the, the situation quite a bit. I didn't want any drawer stops, no drawer pulls, and no drawer false fronts. Looking back on this, I think the drawer runners should be shortened quite a bit, as they are unnecessarily wide. And finally, a quick check with a square to make sure the drawer runners remain perpendicular to the sides while the glue dries. The plywood is only one half of an inch thick, specifically 0.47 inches thick. So I added blocks to the bottom where the casters go. This doubled up thickness of plywood will give enough material to use one inch washer head screws to attach the casters. I was still awaiting the casters to be delivered that day. So I went ahead and tested out the drawers. The drawer fronts are actually the drawer stops. They extend half of an inch below the drawer bottom and hit the drawer runners when the drawer is pushed all the way close. There's actually a small gap between the back of the drawer and the back panel, and I designed them this way so that no matter what, the front of the drawer will always line up with the front of the cabinet. Everything slides as expected, even without wax, which will be added after I decide if I'm going to paint it or not. I'm not exactly sure, but we'll see. This is just half inch CD pine plywood, so I'm not expecting kitchen cabinet stability, but I did want to see how much flex or rack was still in the completed build. And with a foot immobilizing the bottom, I was able to flex, get a little bit of flex out of the cabinet, but this is kind of expected with this grade of plywood, this species of plywood, it's still plenty strong enough for this application. And all of the flex is in the plywood itself and not necessarily the joinery. Conveniently, the casters arrived right on time and they were installed with the washer head screws. All that's left to do is a little bit of wire management. So coming from the machine, I have an extension cord for power and an ethernet cable to communicate with the machine. Those are zip tied together and the excess is fed through one of the wire holes in the bottom open area of the cart. The extra is zip tied together, the laptop charger plugged in, and the charger wire and ethernet cable are fed through the back and up to the laptop. Simple wire management, and because this is a laptop that I occasionally use in my house, there's no need to go crazy trying to hide the wires any more than they already are. That's it. If you're interested in the files for this build or other resources, check out my website, the article for this particular video. Also go to jacecustomcreations.com slash newsletter to sign up for my email newsletter so you won't miss anything that I publish. Have a great day and I'll talk to you in the next video.